I guess so, I do. So today we're in for a treat because we have Dr. Fred Pescatori, and we're going to talk about allergies, asthma, and if we have time, and I hopefully we'll, we'll have time, we're going to talk about Alzheimer's as well. So I don't know how much time we have left, Brian, but I have a feeling it's going to be soon. I think I hear it. The there we go. It's time to dance, Dr. Pescatori. We love you, fear. Bridges we burn. We make mistakes. And we live and learn. When life gets tough. And there you go. It seems like the, the, the yeah, there you go. You can do the head bob. <laughs> If you're in need I love the head bob. Chair dancing. I'll be, I'll be right here. Right here. And when you need a friend, you can count on me. I'll be right here. Right here waiting for you. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Well, hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who are new to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, the purpose of the show is to provide a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal, and it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening friend, will feel empowered to learn a new truth and embrace the life of your dreams. Now, today we are giving away a book and two, not just one, two $20 gift cards. So we're going to have three winners today. Actually, we're going to have two winners because one winner is going to win the book called The, A the Allergy Asthma Cure. It's a complete eight-step eight nutritional program by Dr. Fred Pescatori. And, the, and you'll get a gift card from not only uh, Sunseed Co-op if you live in the Brevard County area, but you'll also get a $20 gift card from uh, Native Sun in Jacksonville. I'm really excited because today we're going to also bring hope for those of you who have been diagnosed with what we think is a condition that we are doomed to have medication for, whether it's an allergy-related issue or asthma, and even candida. I was reading in this book how candida plays a role in all of this. Well, if you think you're doomed, then think again. We're talking to today Dr. Fred Pescatori, of the, well, the author of many books, but this is the one we're going to be talking about today, The Allergy and Asthma Cure. So for those of you, I'm going to take two callers today, the fourth and sixth callers, 407 373-5959. Now you must leave a message. That's 407-373-5959. Or you can also text because we are that modern now on the Low McDermott Radio Show. Now today we're going to talk about the three A's because I mentioned allergies and asthma, but I'm saving another one for, for much later in the broadcast. When the third A is Alzheimer's, which we all are fearful of getting. So since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge. I am grateful that Dr. Fred Pescatori is here to just do just that. Welcome, Dr. Pescatori, to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. Oh, thanks, Lillian. It's such a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure that you're, I mean, you are, talk about A-list, your new book. You're, yeah. you're an A-lister. Let's talk about yeah. you. Share a little bit about your background and how you got involved in uh, this kind of integrative approach to healing. Sure, it was uh, it was very circumstantial how I got involved in this, which I think it happens to a lot of us. Uh, I was sort of very disillusioned with medicine after residency. I hated it. I mean, I wanted wow. to switch careers. It was awful. All I was doing was giving drugs. People were dying. I mean, it wasn't really what I signed up for. 
And so I was figured if I wasn't going to like what I was doing, I might as well do it with a friend in California where the weather's warm and nice and sunny and it's fun. <laughs> um, and so while I was waiting for my license, I came across a, or actually I was headhunted by Dr. Atkins, the yes. famous Dr. Robert Atkins. And I started working for him and I realized what a difference the world could be, like that people actually wanted to take care of themselves. They wanted to be in charge of their health. They wanted to be well. They didn't come at you from a sick model. They came at you from, I wanna be well and I'm gonna be well and I'm gonna stay that way. And that's what was really exciting to me. And it absolutely changed my world, changed my career trajectory. And I've, not, I've got nothing but Dr. Atkins to thank for that. And I will forever be his you know, greatest mentee um, for the yeah. rest of my life. I mean, he really did change my life. So it made me excited about medicine. And I'm still excited about it 25 years later. So 25 yeah. years. And, and those 25 years, did you ever think that you would find yourself saying the things that you're saying today, like you can cure certain conditions because we're not allowed to say you can cure anything. We can say we can medicate everything, oh, but absolutely. not cure. So let's talk about that a little bit. Well, no, I mean, I think, you know, the, the, the verbiage that one uses, yeah. you know, the regulations is what it is. I mean, I knew from day maybe 14 days into being at, um, as starting at the Atkins Center, that I knew I could cure a lot of things without medications. And whether I can say that or not on the air, or you know, in television, that's another thing, or in print, that's a completely other story. That's the government's issue, and that's something that they're gonna have to live with on their conscience. But I know my conscience is clear knowing that I can tell people that they can do things naturally and be well and stay healthy. Is that a language that requires constant repetition for those of you who are listening to this for the first time you're going what you can actually heal your body this may be foreign but today and always on the low mcdermott radio show we learn how to take our health back and our life back and we're going to continue our conversation with dr fred pescatori when we return worldwide at when you need a friend.com we'll be right here waiting for you Okay, so here we go, Dr. Pescatori. You know, that language, um, it's sacrilege. A lot of people get upset when they hear you don't have to take a pill. And I don't know if you know this, but my registered service mark is you can take a pill or you can take responsibility. And it's not that I'm against pills. I, I take a thyroid medication. I need to figure out how to heal my thyroid once and for all. But until, until then, I got, um, I guess, in hospitalized, not hospitalized, what do you call it? Medicalized? Medicalized, yep. yeah. Yeah, I got medicalized with Synthroid, and they're telling me once you start that, you can't get off of it, and I'm like, I'm gonna prove I can. And it's, it's not a, even the right drug. I mean, Synthroid's a terrible drug. Well, right now, I'm on Nature Throid. Excellent. Oh, good, you know, good, good. You know it's out of, it's out of, uh, out of stock. Is so, it really? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, the FDA does this all the time. They go down and they crack down on these little companies, and then, and then it takes them about six months to get it back into the pipeline. But nature throws off. So maybe you can still get it. And if not, get all you can in Jacksonville or wherever well, you Well, yeah. Well, I actually yeah. live in Cape Canaveral. And the pharmacy in Cape Canaveral is a compounding pharmacy. So I'm going to stock oh, up. <laughs> yes, I'm going to stock up. OK, well, that, that's good to know. So, so here's the thing. You know, the mindset that I can never get off of drugs. I can, I always need to take this drug. How can we, how do you get your patients out of that mindset that you can get off of drugs and rely on your body to heal naturally? Well, for my patients, it's easy because my patients are very self-selective. I mean, they come to see me because they don't want to be on drugs. <laughs> so, mm. so they walk in the door and I ask them what medications they're taking. And they say, but I want to be off of all of these. <laughs> So it's kind of really easy for me, um, kind of convincing the general public. I've kind of learned that you kind of have to be a little bit over the top, I guess, so that you pull the conversation to the center. Because if you pull people you know, really far away and say really outrageous things, then they're going to listen to some things that you have to say and say, oh, 
wait a minute, maybe he is right. Maybe I should be thinking about that. Maybe there are other ways of doing it. And I think in this day and age, 25 years into doing this, we've got so many people who have been successful and so many people who just tell their family members. I mean, I must tell you, most of my family members. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Hold that thought, hold that thought. So the music has started. Brian, give us a little cue that the music has started. Just put it on the... 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. And welcome back to the Lil McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn from one another. And today's teacher is Dr. Fred Pescatori. Off the air, we have lots of conversations, and you can listen to these conversations if you go to whenyouneedafriend.com and click the YouTube video. Uh, it will take you to today's conversation with Dr. Fred Pescatori off the air and on the air. Now, Dr. Pescatori, you had mentioned this book, The Allergy and Asthma Cure, because we're going to get right at it. There's so much to talk about. And by the way, 407-373-5959, you get a copy of this book and as well a $20 gift card to uh, Native Sun if you're in Jacksonville and in Brevard County, um, you'll get Sun Seed Co-op $20 gift card to get started on your healthy habits. Okay, so um, when you are... When I get to I get to meet people all the time, and I haven't told you this already, but I I have lots of food allergies. I discovered them a while ago, and immediately I stopped eating the things that were that I was told that I could not eat. But many people believe that they do not have any allergies in their body, but yet they're inflamed. They have um, other issues. So can you explain the difference between a sensitivity and allergy and how to best discover what these are? Well, you know, you bring up a good point. It's, it's when you look at the statistics about uh, food allergies, um, it's, it's 1% of the population has a food allergy. 1%. 70 percent of the population think they do. Ooh. So that's the, that's the difference in between an allergy and a sensitivity. So an allergy, you're gonna eat something, you're gonna break out in hives, you're not gonna be, your throat's gonna close. That's an emergency. And those foods you should absolutely stay away from and never eat. Although you know, when you look at the studies about nuts and things that are coming out now, you can see that people are actually learning how to desensitize people to nuts. Learning, I mean, we keep people in too clean of an environment, but we can get that later. Yeah. Uh, sensitivities are when things bother you that you're eating that you may or may not even recognize that they're bothering you. Because you either A, eat them all the time. We don't eat food, we don't eat single food. So we're gonna have like a meal that consists of four or five different things. Mm -hmm. If you eat out, it's gonna have 20 different <laughs> ingredients in it. Um, but if you eat at home, at least you know it's just a few ingredients. And how those ingredients interact with each other and what it's doing to your gut until you eliminate those foods, you'll never know that you have these sensitivities. And these sensitivities are chronic. So they're building up, they're building up antigen antibody responses in the body. They're building up inflammation in the body, oxidative stress. I mean, these are all the key buzzwords um, right now, finally, that everybody's starting to understand and be aware of that those are the underlying root cause of all disease. Mm, okay. So a sensitivity versus an allergy. I'm hearing you say that only 1% are allergic and you get those signs. Now I've been told that allergies are intermittent and that's the weird thing about allergies, but perhaps maybe it's sensitivities are intermittent? Sensitivities are intermittent. A true allergy, if you're truly allergic to a tree nut and you take a tree nut, your throat's going to close or you're going to break out in hives and that's going to happen every single time. That okay. You um, but with sensitivities, you're not going to know that it's happening, but that inflammation, that inflammatory response that's going on inside your body is happening each and every time you eat that food. And we become so desensitized that we don't even know that it's happening. Exactly. Exactly. We don't know. Okay. So when we are taking these tests, the scratch tests or the different kinds of tests to learn how do we know that this is a sensitivity or how do we know it is an allergic reaction? How do we know? Well, these scratch tests, these pinprick tests, they're terrible. They okay. really work when you're young, um, when you're 20, 30 years old. That's the, at 30, they start to really lose their effectiveness. 
and they're only looking at one specific part of the immune system. So what I have learned to do in my practice is utilize blood testing for a lot of these things. I used to have a, an NAET practitioner at my office who used to do muscle testing for these types of things, but I generally use blood testing that will tell me whether, because a blood test will look at different phases of the immune system. So they will look at IgG, IgE, complement. They will look at a, probably 14 or 15 different ways your immune system is responding to these particular foods. Whereas when you do the skin prick test, when you do a traditional blood test with your doctor, they're looking at IgE or they're looking at IgG. They're only looking at one very small part of the immune system. And that's where the problem is because food sensitivities, by their very nature, affect multiple parts of the immune system. Okay, so IgG, IgE, explain the difference between the two. Well, the difference are just subclasses of an immunoglobulins. We've got A, A M, D, E, and, and various ones uh, uh, will react to various different things. And if you're only looking at one, it may not react to one, but when you're looking at 15 different uh, immune components, then you're gonna really see how your body interacts, how your immune system is reacting to the foods that you eat. And that's really why food sensitivity testing is so important to me in my practice. Now, I'm not here to say that food sensitivity testing is 100% accurate because it's not. But no test we really have is 100% accurate. So I really think it's really important that your practitioner understands the specific tests that they're using because there are a number of different food sensitivities out there. But I think if the practitioner, your doctor, nurse, whoever it happens to be, chiropractor, whoever, um, understands the, the tests that they're doing and also understands the limitations of the tests that they're doing. Then you have somebody who can really put together a really good program for you. And you're actually a testament to that. I mean, you had somebody figure out what your food allergy, food sensitivities were, and you probably feel better as a result of that. Without a doubt. That was back in 96 when I had my allergies tested. And then I had my blood work done. And when I got my blood work, I just didn't understand how to read all the, the information, a plus one, a zero, a negative one. I had no idea. And I had garlic in there. I had, I'm like, I can't give up garlic. Oh my gosh. You know, it's exactly. like, it's like, but I don't understand. Am I allergic? Am I sensitive? How do you build that sensitivity? So let's talk about the, there is the um, uh, conventional way of treatment. And then there's the alternative way to treat. And what are your suggestions? Well, my suggestions are really are, I mean, the only way to really heal, uh, gut, uh, heal sensitivities, food sensitivities, is to fix your leaky gut. Because oh. you wouldn't have food sensitivities if you didn't have a leaky gut. That's where it all comes from. Now, a leaky gut is sort of, you know, our gut starts at our mouth and ends at the other end. Mm -hmm. So all along that gigantic, enormous trail, and it's big, it's bigger than we are, Along that enormous trail, we've got ways that our body absorbs food. Well, what happens is we get these tiny microscopic holes in the lining of our stomach, in the lining of our digestive tract, our colon, our small intestine, all of those types of things. Now, you can't see them. It's microscopic. It's not like you have these giant holes. They're not ulcers. They're just these microscopic little holes where, where food particles will get through undigested food particles will get through. When these undigested food particles get through, your body creates this antigen antibody response. It's just like when you get a cold. When you get a cold, your body says, whoa, this virus isn't supposed to be here. So it builds up all of these defenses around it to get rid of it. The same thing is happening in your gut when, you're, when, you, get these, when you get these little tiny undigested food particles going through. And that's when you get food sensitivities. So food sensitivities, could be 300 different symptoms from a runny nose after you eat to, to a, a, you know, a stomach ache, to a, dige a digestive, bloating, yeah. to bloating, to gas, to headaches, to feeling tired that you want to go to sleep after you eat, to not being able to focus, to not concentrate, brain fog. I mean, it goes, the list is three. Things you know. that we call life, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That we're just like, oh yeah, I just don't feel right oh, that's okay, I just don't feel good after I ate that, but I, I don't care, I don't know what it is, it tastes good, right? That's yeah. all I really care about. Yeah, you have all these symptoms in your book, in page, I think it's 62, irritability, 
um, you know, difficulty breathing. And of course, those are the obvious, the difficulty breathing, rashes, those are obvious, but there are other things that are in here that we just think, oh, it's just part of life. Like yeah. being tired after you eat is uh, a sign. Okay, I so mean, fall asleep in the afternoon after they eat lunch, right? Yeah, everybody. And hey, in Europe, it's it's a fad. <laughs> <laughs> it's what they do. So it, the book is called The Allergy Asthma Cure, and we're giving a copy to the fourth caller or texter, and the sixth will get a twenty dollar gift card, and the fourth will get a twenty dollar gift card from Native Sun and Sunseed Co-op, and it's the Allergy Asthma Cure. Be the fourth six caller 407-373-5959. Now, as we move forward and we are kind of in denial, so these sensitivities that we have that we are just like totally oblivious to, can they hurt us in the long run if we Absolutely. don't nip it? They're killing us. I mean, they're killing us in the long run. I mean, they lead to things like, I mean, you have to remember the gut is our second brain, right? Mm -hmm. So it can lead to depression. It could lead to mood swings. It can lead to, um, it could lead to, we talked about what you mentioned, Alzheimer's at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. It can lead to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease. I mean, you have to realize when your body is under a constant source of inflammation, you, I mean, oxidative stress is the result, I mean, causes heart disease causes strokes, causes wow. cardiovascular disease, causes all sorts of things we don't want to have happen. I mean, not to mention, you know, the bowel stuff. I mean, so many people, I can't tell you how many patients come in and say, I can't, everything I eat makes me sick. I mean, so it, or, or I have to move my bowels five times today, or, or I have diarrhea, or I, I have to move my bowels in five days, you know, I have chronic constipation. So it's not just the stomach stuff. It's really the oxidative stress that leads to every, every process in our body relies on having no inflammation. And we are just human beings in America. We are filled with inflammation because of this, because we eat the wrong foods. We eat too much sugar. We take too many prescription, too many prescription drugs, including antibiotics, um, oral contraceptives, steroid medications, um, even inhaled steroids. I mean, everybody's, every, every body's taking a puffer for some reason or another. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I was there. That. I don't know why nobody else can. Uh, so I think it's this inflammation is at the root cause of every disease we know of, including and, cancer. Yeah. And you also include candida. You say in your book that most of us have candida out of control. We do out of control. It grows in our body because we take too many antibiotics, too many of those drugs I just mentioned, and it causes the yeast to overgrow. And the yeast is what causes those holes in our gut. And that's what leads to the leaky gut syndrome, which leads to all of this inflammation. And you're saying that all of this can be repaired. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Give me three months. You're, you'll be a different person. Three months. And you see, that's the thing. That's the mentality that we have. Like, nah, it can't happen, Dr. Pescatore. So Boy, it's too much work. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about work. that. Let's talk yeah. about the reality. It's too much work. But how, how worth it is it? Oh, my. What? You're, I always say, you know, do you want to be healthy or do you want that donut? Like, what's the difference? Like, here's your options. It's like the red pill or the blue pill. I, love I mean, that. I love I love the red pill. I, I just recently talked about how I accidentally took the red pill when I started the show. <laughs> Darn it! I had to learn. I had to learn all this stuff through people like you. It's your fault, Dr. Pescatori. And we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Fred Pescatori. But before we do that, I want to remind you, 407-373-5959, giving two gifts today. One a book and two $20 gift cards. So call 407-373-5959. And we're going to continue our conversation when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Made it in on time. <laughs> it's like, whew. Okay, so that's the thing. I say this all the time. I'm so glad you talked about the red pill because do you know who who remind me of this red pill is um, Dr. G. Edward Griffin. Do you know him? Sure. He actually did the, I don't know if he actually did it and I have to reach out to him again, but the red pill convention. 
<laughs> I've never heard of that. And guy. I said, Dr. Griffin, what, what is, I mean, not Dr. Griffin. I said, he's not even a doctor. I said, um, Mr. Griffin, because I, I call him Mr. Griffin. He, I said, what is the red pill? And he told me. And I'm like, oh, I cannot stand uh, sci-fi. I don't even, and he goes, I want you to watch that movie again, but I want you to look at it as this is what's going on in your gut. <laughs> Have you ever thought of such a thing? No, but it's, but now that I'm thinking about it, it's true. It really is. A, it's a great analogy. It, it is. And yeah. I was able to go back and I was able to look at these monsters and all these things that move into our gut that we are, we take the blue pill, we continue eating our donuts. So here's the thing. You know, I always, and this is the meatloaf song that I love to sing that reminds me, because I'm, I'm a certified life coach, and I have people that want to get better, and they want to change their life, and they'll do, because I'll ask the question, what are you willing to do? And so it sounds like meatloaf. I will do anything for you, but I won't do that. So I'll do anything to be, get, get better, but I won't do that. What are some of the things that I really want to talk about during the, uh, when we come back on the air? Some of the things, some tips to, to get us to move towards that. Because you hear Candida, and I was looking at your book last night, of all the things you cannot have. What are the things we can have? Because that's a shorter list. Well, the things we can, I mean, it's simple. It's proteins, whether it's vegetable protein or animal protein, vegetables, you can have any vegetable you want in the world. I mean, the only, you know, it's really quite, you can have sugar, you can have low sugar fruits, you can't have anything that turns it turns um, into sugar in the body. Uh, so those are things like grains and simple carbohydrates and things like that. But I think what I really want people to understand is that it's not forever. I mean, this is a cure. I mean, you're going to be better in I always tell people that you're going to be better in your next allergy season. So you come to me in the fall, by spring, you'll be better. If you come to me in the spring, by fall, you'll be better. So, you know, it takes one allergy season for your body to sort of repair and heal. And that's really, you know, and people don't, the biggest problem I have or the biggest opposition is consistency with people. You know, they'll try anything for like a week or two, and then inevitably something else happens, right? A birthday comes up, a party comes up, an anniversary comes up, a vacation comes up, a holiday comes up. Well, those are just all excuses, right? I mean, yeah. you know, do you, again, do you want to be healthy or do you want to have that donut? You know, it's really that simple. I mean, to me, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, there was a, a quote that I just absolutely love um, in the documentary, Eating You Alive. A doctor says, you know, here we are at a funeral eating the same foods that got that person in the casket, celebrating their life. It's true. It's true. That's why I don't ever serve. I mean, when people come to my house for dinner, they know what to expect. They're not going to have all of that other stuff. I'm cooking the way I cook and they're going to eat it. And most of and I would and say- it's so good. It's so good because there's so many great foods that you can have. There's so many great ways of preparing them. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievable the limited palate that people have. And they say to us that we have a limited palate because that's all we eat. No, they tend to eat the same five bad foods that are inflammatory for you mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. And uh, those are the things, you know, and whether it's the same burger with fries or it's the same whatever it's all that fast food all that garbage all that nonsense all that packaged food it's so much eat yeah you know, oh i've got to order in i have no time well it takes me less than 30 minutes to create and and in all of my books most of the recipes pretty much you can do in 30 minutes or less yeah i, I saw these oh music a little louder this time. <laughs> okay when we come back i'm going to talk about my social media and then i'll introduce you you can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. And welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where you can hear us worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. I am your host, Lillian McDermott, and I am so excited that day after day, we get to learn and grow together. Go through life with childlike wonder. Look at a child. I mean, they don't know anything, or they don't pretend to know anything. And look at how much joy and how much they learn because they're open. And today, we're talking about how we can heal the three A's. So that's allergy, asthma, and Alzheimer's. We haven't talked about Alzheimer's yet, but we've already touched upon the fact that if we continue to be sensitive 
to some of the foods that we're ignoring. It could lead to all these other diseases that need not happen. And so this is the kind of responsible conversation that we have on the Lamar McDermott Radio Show. And I want to encourage you to take that responsibility that responsibility that will lead you to empowerment and freedom. So I ask you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com. Please become a subscriber. And while you're in there, make sure that you check out my sponsors because without my sponsors, this show would not happen. So please check out my sponsors and figure out a way that you can support them. And also, I want to encourage you to like me on my social media. And as I had said before, because there's podcasts, there's YouTube, and there's a phone number that I would like for you to put it on your favorites, because I was told that there's no longer a speed dial. It's favorites. 407 373 5959. And today we have two kinds of winners. One will win a book and a $20 gift card from Native Sun or Sunseed Co op, depending where you're listening. And the second caller will get just the $20 gift card. Just the reason why I say just is because. This is a gift. This is a start for you. For those of you who say that eating healthy doesn't taste good or is expensive, we're here to prove otherwise. If you just would stop eating out, if you would just stop buying all this boxed foods that will eventually cause your bankruptcy to occur because of all the medical bills. So we're saving you money and now we're going to give you $20 gift cards, 407-373-5959. Now today I am excited that we have Dr. Fred Pescatori, the right hand person for Dr. Atkins. That's how he got his start, his humble beginnings, I would say. Dr. Fred Pescatori, I'm so grateful that you are here on the show today to share your wisdom. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you for having me. It's always, I always, uh, I always appreciate those of you who allow me to come and talk to your audience. I mean, because it really just is, it's a blessing for me to be able to get this information out to so many more people. And, you know, I just want to touch on something you touched on, which was uh, the cost. I mean, yes. the cost of eating this way, changing your lifestyle, taking nutritional supplements. The only people we have to blame for the cost of this is truly our government. I mean, mm -hmm. it's because we really do not have a system to bring organic foods to market in, a, in an inexpensive way. And that's the whole problem why they're so expensive. They're not expensive because they use less pesticides or herbicides or all of that stuff. The cost all comes from getting it to market. And because we have no place, we have no, no system set up to bring it to market, it's what keeps the prices high. So you know, all we have to you all talk about farmer's markets and yes. eating local. T share a little bit about that. Well, I mean, there's a great, I mean, it's a great way. I mean, I'm a strong believer in eating local, seasonal, organic foods if possible. I choose local and seasonal over organic all the time. And it's important that you go to markets. You can go to something, I think it's called csa.org or something like that, or csa.com, which gives you your community-centered um, places where you can get where you can get food actually delivered to your door very inexpensively. Once a week, they bring you what's local, what's seasonal from the farms. You guys live somewhere so more Southern than I do. So you're able to get food for a much longer period of time than I can. So yeah. it's really exciting that people look into things like this. Yes, absolutely. So during the break, we started talking about, you know, how we really want to get better and how we want to be healthy, but we're not willing to do what we need to do, there are some limiting beliefs that we have going there. The first one that we went uh, talked about already is that it's going to taste bad. And the reality is it tastes really, really good. It's really good. I mean, there's 200 recipes in that book. Uh, there's recipes all over the web now. I mean, it's never been easier to be healthy. I mean, it really hasn't. And unfortunately, I think people are people shy away from their kitchens because they're afraid. They don't know how. They didn't learn it. They're too busy working moms, taking kids everywhere where they have to go. But it's just as quick to make a 30-minute meal at home than it is to order a pizza that could take 45 minutes to get to your door. So I really think that's important that people understand good food is out there and it's delicious. And all you have to do is cook a little bit of it. And once, and I cook big things that'll last for the week or 
you know, you, know, you prepare on a weekend or you prepare, you know, at the end of the day when you, you're feeling good about yourself or something, or when you're not going to gym, going to the gym right after work or something. And just take some time to prepare foods because that's all it takes to, to cure your allergies and asthma. I mean, it really does. And I'll go out there on a limb and say cure because I have so many patients who are no longer on medications. They come into me with six medications and six months later, they're on none. And they're not on any of them for the next five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years that I see them. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's really important that people understand you can take charge of your health because nobody else is going to take charge of your health for you. So you've got to do it. And the other thing I always like to tell people is that you've got to be able to give, offer this to your children. And I, I, I really wrote this book because I was an asthmatic child. And mm -hmm. so it had, it was really near and dear to my heart. And so you, if you can allow you, and, and everybody says, well, how can I deprive my child of X? How can I deprive my child of Y? You're not depriving them of anything. You're giving them good health. I mean, again, it comes down to, do you want your child to walk around with two inhalers and be on prednisone all the time? Or do you want your child to have, you know, gummy bears? I mean, it's really simple. I mean, it's, it's no brainer to me, but anyway. No, sure. you're absolutely, that's a great point. <laughs> the mindset, Dr. Pescatori, the mindset is so important. It all depends. I remember when I was a kid, my dad was in the Air Force, and every time we'd move every six months, it'd go, new house, new school, new friends, and we'd go, yay, 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 right? But now, you know, you see some parents go, oh, we got to move, or we got to eat healthy, or I've got to give up this, or I got to give up. Instead of saying, I am going to embrace something new, I'm going to embrace, embrace health. Head. Yes. There's so many great things out there that people don't know about. And, and, and honestly, when I started doing this 25 years ago, you could well imagine how difficult it was to tell people to eat gluten-free or to eat yeast-free or to eat casein-free. It was close to impossible. I had die-hard patients back then. Now it's super easy. Now you can go into a store and everything's gluten-free. And not that I think gluten-free products are good for you, mind you. That's a whole other story. Yeah, whole that's other another show. Story can't spend. But um, I mean, I just think eating foods that are, I mean, when you're looking at allergies and asthma, I get rid of gluten in people's diets. I get rid of yeast in people's diets because I think yeast is really the underlying thing. And yeast is found in anything that has sugar in it. Cheese is, is yeast. So you have to be careful of dairy and cheese. You've got to be careful of things that ferment, vinegar, for instance, anything that's fermented, pickles, smoked salmon, things that are fermented like that, you really have to be careful with. Um, and that's and, and that's really, I mean, if you get a, I, I put people on gluten-free, casein-free, and yeast-free diet. Casein-free is, is the protein found in dairy. Yeah. So if you get rid of, if, and, and really, so what does that leave you with? It leaves you with nuts, it leaves you with seeds, it leaves you with vegetables, it leaves you with protein, both animal and vegetable protein. Uh, so that's really what it leaves you. And do you know how many things you can make with those foods? Oh, so much. And uh, delicious. And, and delicious. I eat deliciously every single night. And, it's, and, and my asthma has gone. My patient's asthma and allergies are gone. I mean, it's amazing to not have to be on those drugs that sort of make you tired all the time. Or the inhalers. Those inhalers can cause osteoporosis. They can cause diabetes. They can cause all sorts of problems that people think, ah, what difference does it make? I, I can breathe now. But you can be able to breathe if you would just follow a few simple instructions like get rid of the sugar in your diet, get rid of the simple carbohydrates, get rid of, rid of the rice, the pastas of the world, all of those things. And I'm not saying you never have to eat those things again, but those things are meant to be eaten in moderation. Like the amount of sugar, and I'm going to get this, this, I'm going to get this statistic wrong, but it basically <laughs> takes Americans 17 minutes to eat the same amount of sugar that an American in like the 1900s would take five years to eat. We eat them in 17 minutes. That so that's is scary. Problem. Considering what sugar does to the immune system, the sugar will, uh, a teaspoon of sugar will decrease your immune system by 56%. Two teaspoons of sugar will decrease your immune system by 83%. The average American eats 33 teaspoons of sugar a day. Think about that one. That is um, sobering statistics, really. And, and, you know, not far from those statistics are artificial sweeteners that were created to poison rats. And here we're putting it in everything now. Because in our mind, we're eating healthier if we don't eat sugar. 
great new study that came out talking about how artificial sweeteners are just as bad for you and it sets up the same blood sugar reaction for you than it does as sugar. Not stevia or not, um, there's another one that we'll talk about after break, but not that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to mark that down for what's, what's the other sugar, but I use module dates and that is it. And I love my module dates. I make cakes that are oh, just monk fruit. Uh, monk the fruit. what? Lohan. It's from monk fruit. Oh, there you they go. Non-nutritive, non-caloric sweeteners, which are very good for you and very healthy. And you can find them in any store now. Oh, I'm going to have to find that out. You know, I just don't crave sugar anymore. And I used to be a sugar holic. Can you believe that? Yeah. And we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Fred Pescatori when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Okay. So monk food. Monk, monk, fr monk, monk fruit. M-O-N-K. M-O-N-K fruit. And that is something that you can sweet. Like Lohan, I believe it's in the stores. L-O-H-A-N. Um, and actually the beauty of monk fruit is that it cooks like sugar. So like one cup of monk fruit is like this is one cup of sugar. So you don't have to change the recipes. Like when you're working with stevia, stevia is a little harder to work with. I can't with. have stevia. Um, I get really bloated. Why is that? Uh, you know, it's got a lot of anti-inflammatory properties in it too. Um, and it's antifungal. So maybe, maybe you have a little, I don't know, maybe it's that or, you know, and look, who knows? We're all allergic to something or sensitive to something. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, would, I would try monk fruit or lohan. It's really, it's really quite amazing. Really? I'll try that monk fruit. How about, st um, xylitol? See, xylitol is a sugar alcohol. So, you know, it's, it's a sugar alcohol. It can cause stomach distress. It can, and it will act in the body. Anything that ends in an OL will act in the body just the same way as sugar. And I wrote about that in my newsletter. No and, way. Um, You're going to have to say anything with OL acts yeah. like sugar. That is, I never heard that before. Did we lose you, Dr. Pescatori? I think we lost you. Um, let's see. You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. And welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow with one another. Today's teacher is Dr. Fred Pescatori. And I am so glad that he is on the Lynn McDermott Radio Show to share his wisdom. Where the book is called The Allergy Asthma Cure. And we just got disconnected from Dr. Pescatore, and I'm hoping that he'll be able to join us back in. Um, yeah, if uh, so, Brian, if you can text that. I think he's coming back in. Perfect. I'm glad that he's coming back on. But for those of you who would like a copy of The Allergy Asthma Cure, you have to, you get to do the work if you want to be healthy, you embrace good health. So the fourth caller will get a book, the book, The Allergy and Asthma Cure, and a $20 gift card from either Sunseed Co-op or Native Sun in Jacksonville, depending where you're calling from. And the sixth caller will get a gift card from either one of those places. $20 to get started on your journey to healthy living. And um, Dr. Pescatori, I'm so glad to see your beautiful face. <laughs> oh, so All of a sudden, you got a temporary glitch. Yeah, you got a little frozen there. You got a little frozen. But I'm glad you're back. Okay, we talked about, um, you, you mentioned something during the break that I want to mention it again which is anything that ends with OL, because I asked you about xylitol um, and all these uh, sorbitols. Well, those are sugar alcohols. I mean, so the, anything that ends in OL is, acts like a sugar in the body. Anything that ends in OSE is a sugar in the body. I mean, so there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of funny ways that food manufacturers play with us so that they think we're not having sugar um, because people understand the word sugar, but they don't understand when they change it into brown rice syrup sugar. You know, all of these things, when you look at the ingredients on a label, it'll have 20 different sugars in it. Sounds sexy, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and, and it like, you know, 
death in a, in a package is what it sounds like. Yeah. To yeah. Okay. So one of the things that we're talking about sugar and, um, I saw you in the documentary, um, Alzheimer's, the awakening from Alzheimer's, and you did a fabulous job. I want to pr- appreciate what you've done. Now, Alzheimer's is called diabetes three, <laughs> right? It's a new, the new acknowledgement of Alzheimer's. So we're talking about sugar. Let's go into how these sensitivities can lead us to Alzheimer's. Is that a good segue? Sure. Well, yeah, you have to realize, um, as I said at the beginning, or maybe we said it off air, is that our gut is our second brain. So most of the neurotransmitters, 80% of the neurotransmitters that are used in the brain are produced in our gut. So if you have a, if you have a leaky gut, you're also going to have a brain that doesn't function correctly. Mm-hmm. If you're eating low-fat foods, you're going to have a brain that doesn't function correctly because our brain is 80% fat. We have a blood-brain barrier. So that blood-brain barrier, what they're thinking now with Alzheimer's disease is that the blood-brain barrier also gets leaky. And when that blood-brain barrier gets leaky, that's when you get all this inflammatory stuff that goes into the brain. Mm. You know, And that's why there's so many amazing supplements like Blue Nest or something like that that actually works on this M1 receptor. And the M- M1 receptor is what causes is what allows our cells to communicate to each other, to talk to each other, because our brain cells, well, all of the nerves in our body are constantly speaking to each other, but specifically in the brain, it's the M1 receptor. And when you get this leaky gut and you have this inflammation, it knocks the M1 receptor right out of whack. And that's wow. really what we're trying not to do. Wow. And you know, I talk about a lot of this stuff in my newsletters, and, and I think if people, they're all, they're free, my newsletters. So people can yeah. Have, yeah. For it. I want you to go to Dr. It's Dr. Pescatori, and I'll have it on my Facebook page. And when you sign up with Dr. Pescatori, you get a reverse Alzheimer's um, bonus for oh, signing up. Fantastic. That's great. I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. Would you like to sign up, Dr. Pescatori? <laughs> well, I'm doing this big Alzheimer's summit um, before the end of the year. So if they sign up, they'll know when that's happening and all that stuff. Cause I think Alzheimer's is such a complicated system, right? You've got to make sure the person's gut is, is working right. You've got to make sure that they're eating the right foods. You've got to make sure that they're taking the right nutritional supplements because when you have, you know, when you're looking at oxidative stress, which we talked about before, you know, you have something that we have called glutathione in the body and glutathione is so super important because it's, it's really one of our body's main antioxidants produced by the liver. It decreases as we get older. There's really no good way except this supplement called RegActive that works to produce glutathione in the body. And glutathione helps clear these, these toxins, these memory damaging toxins from the body. It acts as an antioxidant. So it's reducing oxidative stress. It's helping to heal that, that um, brain, blood brain barrier. So, so we, again, like I said, we could talk about Alzheimer's, another show, a whole yes, show. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, we can do that. You said something about glutathione. How do you consume glutathione? You said something about reg. Reg Reg active. I'm sorry. Mm R-E-G-A-C-T-I-V. And um, it's an amazing, all it is, is a um, probiotic. And it's not a probiotic. You, You would not take it in lieu of your other probiotics. But it is a specific probiotic called the lactobacillus fermentum. And it very specifically causes your body to extend the life of the glutathione that your body produces and to help it support the production of glutathione. So it's an amazing product between that and Blue Ness, which helps with the M1 receptors. And I sell Blue Ness under the name brand name Brain Logic. But um, what I'm gonna do, and this is really exciting for me, I love to formulate products, you don't know about that. Yeah. But there is a, uh, there's a, a new product that I'm putting together with Citicoline, which has amazing research on brain health with um, ME3, which is the uh, RegActive product. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna be a killer product. I mean, people are just loving my brain products. And I love helping to fix brains because with everybody aging now, Everybody, nobody wants their brain to go stale, and especially because we're all aging. We all and and everybody that's aging were these really, you know, sort of high level executive people. You know, the baby boomers who will mm-hmm. not. 
go into aging without kicking and screaming. So they're <laughs> everything that they can possibly get. And that's why brain is so exciting to me. I was just at a recent trade show and I must say, 25 to 30 percent of the show was all about brain health so it was, it was actually really interesting to see what people are interested in what the next big category of, of health is going to be um, but that's so scary for us i know that it's 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 exciting for you but it's scary for us because the next thing you know the market will flood us with things that we may or may not need what is your advice for us that you know here we are thinking that you know oh yeah we want to eat our pizza and we want to eat our fast food and we want to eat easy convenient stuff but that those choices that we're making today 20 years from now can affect our memory so they what are. can we do today what can we do today yes. that's really simple stop eating sugar Stop okay. eating simple carbohydrates. Have them as treats. You know, if you want to have it as a birthday cake, if you want it for Christmas, if you want it for Hanukkah, whatever you want it for, no, don't make these foods staple items in your diet. That is the best thing you can do. Decrease oxidative stress. Exercise. We didn't. I have not mentioned that word in this entire hour. That's uh, another show. <laughs> exercise all the time. And the only thing that we know that helps prevent Alzheimer's or Cognitive decline is exercise. So let's make sure you get out and exercise. So the two biggest things you can do, if you do, you get nothing else out of this whole message, exercise and don't eat any sugar. And you're going to be, as, you're going to be, that's going to make your health so much better just by doing those two things. Wow. Well, well said. Thank you, Dr. Pescatore. And for those of you who would like to learn more about Dr. Pescatore, you can go to drpescatore.com. Dot com and you can get a copy of How to Reverse Alzheimer's. And I need to remind you, 407-373-5959, the fourth and sixth callers will get prizes today, 407-373-5959. This is so exciting that we can control our health, has nothing to do with our DNA because we can turn it on and we can turn it off. So let's turn on the good genes that we inherited so beautifully from our family. Dr. Pescatore, you're an amazing man. I'm so grateful that you were able to bless us today with your wisdom. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. And to you, my listening friend, you have a choice to make. Please consider this as a new truth and let's embrace a healthy lifestyle. Please remember, this is Lil McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day Ever. Ever. Good job, Dr. Pescatore. <laughs> this is good. You know, it's, it's important. Um, we're signing off now off the air. Now this is your opportunity to look into the camera and talk to someone who has been watching us this whole entire time um, and still believes that this is a bunch of bunk. Um, how can, you, <laughs> yeah, because I've been eating this way since 1996. And let me tell you, I've been attacked made fun of, been mocked. And I, at 54, I feel the best I've ever felt. Oh, I agree. I mean, I call it, I call it skinny shaming. I'm constantly shamed for what I eat. I'm constantly shamed for being thin. I'm constantly shamed for going to the gym. But you know what? I'm 56 years old. Look at I'm you. Healthy. I'm amazing. I'm in great shape. I, I, I mean, I think I, I am not here as a physician to tell anyone a, you know, sell anyone a bunch of lies. I mean, I have seen this work and I follow the studies and I only talk about products that have been well-documented, well-researched, and the science is there. Mm -hmm. So I encourage everyone to sort of look at my newsletters and go to my website because everything I say and everything I've told you just now is documented by scientific literature. I'm not making any of this stuff up. It's I choose to talk about it because it's my passion and my interest. And, you know, there are other interests. There are other big business interests out there that want to shut you and I up because it gives them less money and less opportunity to keep people ill and to buy drugs that they may or may not need. So it, it's interesting. I had uh, Dr. Dr. Ron Weiss came on the show and he said when he was in his third year of college, uh, medical school, the dean of the school came in and said, if you think that you are going to heal anybody, cure anybody, you can get that out of your mind. You will be wrong. You will not heal a single person. You will manage their medication. 
Mm -hmm. No, when I was in, when I was in training at re in residency, and this is the biggest thing that turned me off was that, you know, the attendings would come and say, well, what did you, why did you, why didn't you expect the patient to die? People come to hospitals to die. Like, Oh, didn't know that. <laughs> I thought we were here to make people better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that so disillusioned? You spend all this money. And here's another thing, and maybe you can comment on this, and I know you have patients to go see as well. And, and maybe we can let this be the last thing. But as you're um, you know, looking at your patients and you're, you're realizing that um, you're pretty much, people are sent to a hospital to die. What is your opinion as far as that you can make the choice to live. What is your opinion that you can choose to be healthy? Look, I mean, I think I always tell my patients, stay as far away from doctors and hospitals as you can. That's the healthiest you will be is if you stay away from us. And if you stay away from hospitals, because if you tell us something, we will look for something and find something, which may or may not be a good thing or a bad thing. But I think I think what I really want, I think the, the most important part of this whole puzzle is that our type of being and our type of living and our type of just whatever we do um, focuses, on, uh, focuses on doing things consistently. And it's not going to work if you do it for a week. Oh, yeah, I took a fish oil pill for a week. It did nothing for me. Yes. No, this is something you have to do for the rest of your life. Yes, you're going to do it harder at some points. You're going to do it less at some points. It's just like a job. It's just like a career. It's just like your kids. When your kids are this big, they need more of you. When they're adults, they have different needs than, than they have. It's the same way with health. It's the same way with medicine. But just take charge of your health. Just don't let your doctor bulldoze you into doing anything that's uncomfortable for you and doesn't feel right. And especially in this day and age when you can get on this computer and you can look anything up. And granted, there's a lots of bad stuff out there. But there are also lots of good people that you can look things up as well and really get to the truth of the matter and find people who are science-based and who look at things from a scientific point of view who are not there to just sell you something but are there to actually make you feel better. And I just want to add to what you just said that you're not saying don't ever go to a doctor because it, so, you know, prevention is key. I we write prescription drugs all day long. It's just not the first thing I grab for. When, I mean, my patients come in, I have 30 minutes to spend with them or an hour to spend with them. We talk about their life. I talk about, I know everything about them, how much they exercise, who their parents are, who their grandkids are, who their nieces and nephews are. I take care of entire families. That's what's so joyous for me, why I have such a good time at the office. But you can do all of this stuff. It's, it's truly amazing. Well, thank you so much for bringing hope today, Dr. Pescatore. I'm looking forward to learning more about your um, your medication that you're putting together, not a medication, supplement that you're putting together that has the glutathione and the um, lactobacillica. It's, it's amazing. I mean, all people have to do is sign up for that free newsletter and they'll get all the information for them. Send, yeah. send me. Once you get your prototype, I mean, is it, is it already created and you're just getting it to market? It's, it's, it's just being, it's being, uh, it's formulated. It's at the, it's, it's at the manufacturer now. So we should have it hopefully by the end of the year. Wonderful. Send me a, send me a little bit so I can just maybe do a show on it as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Pescatore. I'm looking Pleasure. forward to our next conversation. Thanks again for having me. Okay. And thank you, my, my viewing friends, for watching today. I hope you learned something that you can bring to heart. Ah, there we go. We pause the recording. Nope. It